Today is Wednesday, February 22nd. It is 1.03 p.m. Uh, EST where I am right now for our internal AMA of the week. Um, February is coming close to an end. The next week AMA, I'm pretty sure, will be around March 1st or the beginning of the new month. Well, we're going to start off being a little bit more interactive than we usually are. The last AMA was very professional. We broke down exactly what we're working on, um, the new updates. We walked over the UI, uh, the new user experiences, a lot of the adaptations uh, that we've had for the business and the project. Um, honestly, I just want to kind of get your all's feedback in regards to what do you all think of the brand change? What do you all think of the logo? Um, do you all like it? Do you all like where we're headed? Um, leave the comments in the Telegram group. Uh, we'll look at it and get it taken care of. Because uh, honestly, that's what I'm really curious about. Um, something that I want to do is a slow transition. I don't want to be, all right, we're going to have this specific date where we're going to move over everything. The UI, all logos changed. Uh, for me, it's just um, it's a recipe for disaster. Because if you mess up one time, then all of a sudden your huge rebrand is just destroyed. It kills the hype and all of that. So I'm doing a different strategy. Uh, I'm doing a smooth transition. Um, there, there's different ways you can go about it. Uh, you can build it up and, and then all launch it at once, or which is a little bit of a riskier style in my opinion. Uh, it does pay off if you can pull it off. Uh, but I like to transition slowly. Like uh, at first we started changing the logos. Um, at first we've changed the admin pictures. We've changed some things on social medias. A lot of the new graphic designs, the graphic posts are starting to get changed. Uh, my end goal is for all of this to be finalized by Q1 2023. So when Q2 starts, uh, which should be uh, April 1st, when, when that starts, everything's transitioned. Uh, without having that set date, it all be crazy, hectic. I'm over here grabbing my head like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I wish a lot of you all were here uh, when we actually launched and deployed the ZAW contract, um, some faces were, uh, some faces weren't, but let's just say that, wow. <laughs> if you ever want to go back in the old videos and watch how crazy it was, um, I never want to relive that experience again. Uh, being completely transparent and honest, it was the worst time of my life. Uh, obviously, you're launching this big crypto project. It should be an amazing, fun time. But uh, in all reality, it was nothing but stress and horror. Um, so uh, instead of having the rebrand set on a specific date where we then just like uh, envision and then transport that way, we're definitely going to go a much slower route and, and plan uh, more of like the, the slower approach. And then finally, we all wake up. New UIs drop, gift cards drop. There's no issues with the gift card catalog. People can transact smoothly. Um, that's kind of my goal, like testing on the background, uh, staging servers up, and then we'll just do a smooth transition. Um, that's my overall goal with uh, how we plan to actually maneuver. But uh, leave it in the chat. What do you all think of the uh, the new design? Do you all like the logo change? Do you like the white and gold? Um, I can kind of talk a little bit about it. So for example, I know the initial colorway was the navy blue, the dark blue look with the gold. Uh, but I did tell you, I'm actually wearing blue right now. Uh, this was not planned. But blue has a sign of depression, just like the green go red sell panic. I mean, trading view uses. It's a very normal candlestick color, right? I use candlesticks a lot because it's the best analogy I can do because I'm a trader myself. So I understand that perspective. And I think it's a very great um, analogy, to be honest with you. So I do think that a lot of people that are using the ZA website, um, this is just from like marketing data uh, analytics based on chat GBT uh, specifically, if you all want to know where my source is. But a lot of the typical person that will be using our services, for example, remember how I said marketing is so important. Find your key individual that will be your uh, your specific niche. Um, it is a more established individual that prioritizes higher spending. Um, and I'm trying to say that in the best way possible, but pretty much it's an individual. It's a mainly, most likely a male that is more inclined to spend uh, lavishly. 
Um, it really is because you, you got to think about it. Crypto is still an asset that people look to buy, similar to how some may view gold. And you're all like, no, crypto and gold is completely different. That's fine. I'm saying in the sense that you buy it, you hold it, you store it, bam. Um, so people that might come from not the best upbringing, they want to they want to hold on to their assets. They want to hold on to their precious metals. Uh, but the individuals that are more lavish uh, with their spending, for example, will then be more inclined to actually use the gift card platform. I know that's like, what are you all talking about? Uh, I'm, I was a little amazed at that too. I definitely thought other countries like developing nations would be more inclined to actually use our platform. But so so far, this is not the data that we've gotten from our Web 2.0 marketing. Uh, this is data that we've gotten from ChatGBT. And I'm going to wrap around exactly why I'm talking about why the niche is lavish style. White and gold. Gold, the color of it. Uh, when you first think of it, what's the first thing you think of? I promise it's not just a color, right? You think of something that's luxury. You think of something that is expensive. Uh, and that's kind of the the key point on why we are initiating this different structure from the blues, which is a more of a deeper, darker color, um, less plan of action, for example, to this higher luxury service. Uh, because at the end of the day, the ZA platform is a service. Um, it allows you to just connect a wallet and then spend, right? Uh, even though it is a product shop, in my eyes, it's a more premium service to take your cryptocurrency and allow you something tangible like this energy drink that I'm going to bang out during this internal AMA. Uh, but it, it's true. Um, you can ask anyone. And the reason that is, is because of how people actually envision uh, crypto. Uh, they view it similar to how people may view a commodity like silver, like gold, um, possibly anything other, anything else like a precious stone. And again, you all may not agree with that. Uh, this is just, you know, information that's coming from chat GBT, which should be um, a very good source. I'm not going to, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. That's not the best, but so far as of right now, until our web 2.0 marketing kicks off, this is why we've actually envisioned the white and gold and why we're actually fine tuning our entire brand for this very specific niche. So leave it in the chat. Uh, tell me what you think of the white and gold. It's growing on me a lot. Um, I I am a personal love uh, for I, I have a personal love for uh, minimalist design. Um, I really like if you look at minimalist architecture or minimalist uh, design, you'll see just probably like a gray background with just like a chair. Right. Uh, no huge, crazy colorways that pop out. For example, Zers, uh, he's in the chat right now. If you all can see the members, um, I would say the design that's on there for that colorway, that's not minimalist. Uh, minimalist is very simple, like typographic logos, like this, the Z and just the A and just the H. Those are minimalist. Um, so we're, we're keeping everything very simple and intuitive uh, when we're kind of switching over this. Um, this upbringing on design. So leave it in the chat. Tell me what you all think. Uh, I would love to hear it. And um, th that's pretty much what I got so far. We do have Farmer Doge coming in a couple hours. Um, we're going to be talking to them. Uh, a lot of interesting questions. I know Richard have a, had a really good question. He said, how are they 700 times down from their all-time high? Um, I'm assuming, and this is just assumptions, right? Uh, we'll talk more about it in depth during the AMA. Uh, I'm assuming that it's because they do yield farming and because they do like high staking. Uh, I think that's why uh, I haven't really looked too much into it, but I'm almost sure. And the reason that is, is kind of the points earlier when you give out free stuff, um, money comes from somewhere, right? If, if, you, if everyone in this chat gets $5, for example, that money is coming from somewhere. So most likely it's coming from LP, it's coming from taxes. And that's usually what actually uh, deflates price or I guess inflates, pr deflates price. Um, so th that's just my assumption. We'll, we'll get the word from them specifically on exactly why. Because I mean, dude, 700 times from an all-time high is is definitely, uh, I, I hope to be 700 times above my all-time low, right? <laughs> That's funny. Um, other than that, um, I haven't been as active in the chat. You all will see me say, hey, hi. It's because I'm working a lot on the back end. I'm working on making sure that the new providers, uh, all the APIs work with them. I'm working on the prepaid visas. 
I'm working with the lawyers. Uh, we're also redesigning a lot of the new graphics. So then when we drop the new UI, uh, we have a whole bunch of actual stuff to play with. Uh, we're also working on videos for After Effects to start our Web 2.0 campaigns. The first, um, the first media that we're going to be starting with is probably Facebook. Uh, just, and honestly, I was going to go that more Web3 route and use like Coinzilla, for example. Coinzilla allows you to do ads on BSC Scan. They allow you to do ads on Dex Tools, which is a demographic that would be very perfect for the ZA brand. Uh, but the reality is, after talking with them, they don't give us the data that we want. They don't show us that. Um, <laughs> that web 2.0 love the, the fact that I can truly know what specific hot topics, the users that click on the Zaw videos, like that's what I want. I want to know exactly the person that clicks on the Zaw website or Zaw Facebook ad, or even interacts on our website. What are their niches? What music do they like? What's their favorite color? These are the questions that I like because we can do retargeting campaigns to go for those specific niches and then try and create lookalike audiences. Um, I have a very brief understanding of Facebook ads, just so you, just so you all know where that actually originates. Um, one of the, I'll say the, one of the most successful businesses I had was actually a drop shipping business. Uh, it, I did it around 2019, I believe to 2021. Pretty much what I did uh, during, uh, Best time was during the uh, COVID situation, believe it or not. What I did was I found very trendy products uh, through ad spies. Like, um, I, I just got to remember some of them. Ad, anyway, I would use ad spies, find products like massagers, um, products as crazy as it sounds, like a flexible gymnastic band, which was one of my b best sellers. Anyway, what we did was we spied on those ads and we found out what they were doing. And we're like, okay, well, they're generating a lot of revenue from this ad. Let's copy this ad. And believe it or not, um, it's completely okay to do that. You just can't copy the actual video, but you can copy the tags. You can copy the niches. You can even copy the captions. It's perfectly okay in the marketing world, believe it or not. Anyway, so what we did was we found those products, um, went into the same exact demographic that those successful companies were targeting in and just ran the same campaigns and started stealing market share. Uh, and I know I'm very ethical when it comes to business, but at the end of the day, that what I just described is business. Um, there's, I'm not breaking a law. We're not hurting anyone. We're just getting a piece of the pie. And that's what we're going to be doing with, with Zah. I'm going to use some of my knowledge and I'm going to find the big names, a bit refill, Coinsby, crypto refills, Coingate. What are they doing? How are they advertising? Are they going on uh, Google AdWords? Are they advertising through Facebook? Are there big niches they're looking for? We're going to reciprocate that. And just so you all know, uh, and this is not me boasting or anything, my drop shipping business did over a hundred thousand in sales of at the max peak. So I do know somewhat. I'm not going to say I'm, I'm a you know advertising genius or marketing genius. Um, it, it really is as simple as kind of that. I actually wrote a book. Oh, I can share you all the book if you all ever want. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually wrote it a really long time ago. Anyway. It describes exactly what I, I did. Uh, I found products that were through ad spies and then copied those niches and through those categories and just reciprocated it uh, over and over and over again. Once an advert or an ad set start stops becoming profitable, you either find another product or you try to find another company that is running a successful ad set. Bam. Just like that, you don't have to waste any money uh, through trying to find categories. You find the specific categories that are already working and just going through those specific funnels. Um, and th that is uh, a, a true story, by the way, just so you all know. So I'm not out here sounding like I'm just baloney or anything crazy like that. I do have uh, a wide experience through Web 2.0 marketing. I would definitely say um, I am a little weak in Web 3 marketing, but that's kind of why we hired the original marketing company that we don't work with anymore was for the launch, was for, I guess, the Caesars calls, the golems and all that. I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, but Again, Web3 marketing is really not my strong suit. There are marketing agencies that we're talking to. Um, I told you all about them. Ninja Promo is one of them. Um, what was the other one? BlockWiz was another one. Um, Coinsbound and then Single Grain. Those are the four companies we're, uh, we've talked to. We're definitely very highly considering Ninja Promo. I'm not going to make any promises and say because 
obviously we still need to do our own research, wait for the new UI to drop because there's no reason to sink money in marketing if you're going to change everything. Uh, and believe it or not, as crazy as this might sound, the people that you're targeting that might interact with a darker color website might be a little bit of the, the data might be a little skewed compared to the people that might interact with the white and gold website. Again, I know that sounds ludicrous, uh, but it's true. Colors have a very powerful uh, colors have a very powerful way on how we interact. And I know I, I say it every day that it's ridiculous, but it, it's true. If you look up why McDonald's uses red and yellow, I didn't know this actually. I knew this other day. Uh, it's because red and yellow makes you hungry. Crazy, right? Who would think a, a color? Anyway, let's get more on topic. So these are the stuff that we're going to be doing um, to with kind of our strategies through the Web 2.0 marketing. Uh, my idea is to get the exact specific user base that interacts and makes purchases on the ZA website, uh, make lookalike audiences, and then with the profits from that, we then use buyback and burns. And with the profits of that, we can do more of the Web 3 influencer route and get that chart where it needs to be. Right now, it looks very healthy. Uh, what happened is kind of what I assumed was going to happen. Just because we are kind of going through that rebrand of the new UI, there is going to be consolidation. Uh, you can look in the previous messages. I, I, Our holders are here to stay because they actually truly see the vision of the project. A lot of the newer people that might have came late, they sold. That's what creates a retracement. Uh, now that we actually have a stable foundation of people that believe in the vision that are technically holding the line, you say it, that creates consolidation because there's just orders that are very small orders that don't affect the chart that are probably going back and forth with the buys and the sells, the buys and the sells. And that's what creates a range. Um, that range, because no one uh, truly wants to sell based on our holder count, uh, they're all long term visionaries. Once we actually start that web 2.0, then we do the buyback and burns. Once we go through the influencer marketing route, um, again, since our holders aren't are holding, that consolidation then has usually a breakout to the upside, which will create an expansion to target the highs. Um, th that's like very simple way to break down the chart. Uh, this is specifically from a DEX standpoint, uh, a centralized marketplace Way different, <laughs> way, way different uh, in the terms of like why uh, stuff happens, in my opinion, right? A DEX, the reason I love a DEX so much, being listed on a DEX at least, is because the people actually control uh, price. And it's so interesting to see how people actually reflect the chart because believe it or not, a lot of the price patterns that you may see that me and you actually do, uh, centralized marketplaces, um, reciprocate and reflect those price patterns, except sometimes it doesn't happen how you think. So it's, it's very interesting uh, to see that all of you all, uh, when you buy and sell, you make very specific patterns. Uh, I, I love to see it. it it's di way different perspective than my, my history from a centralized trading. Um, I love it, honestly. Anyway, so that's kind of the rants about where I'm going with, I want everyone to kind of truly tell me, we have 16 members, you don't have to hop off mic. Tell me what you think of the new colorway. Uh, tell me, do you understand why we're doing the white and gold? Uh, we're truly doing it from an analytical standpoint. I didn't just wake up and say white and gold. Uh, I Believe it or not, I asked ChatGBT, the typical person that bought uh, gift cards with crypto. That's what I implemented. And through that knowledge, uh, we then, you know, advise a strategy to then build a brand around that specific data. And that's where we're going to be pushing forward and using the ZA brand as more of a luxury because it is, it is, it is a luxury service at the end of the day. Um, even though you can, you know, fiat ramp, you can cross chain decks and do other stuff. Uh, the service of converting your, your assets that you own to spendable cash is um, definitely a luxury service indeed. So we're gonna find that we're gonna find that through the web 2.0 with the rebrand. Um, look, create lookalike audiences. Uh, we, we can do some play around with some custom audiences. I will be using ad spies personally that I will oversee. Uh, I do oversee a lot. I oversee the graphics. I oversee um, pretty much everything except for legal opinion. Anyway, I'll be overseeing to make sure that our marketing partners are doing everything efficiently. Uh, because I, I rather have them run the ads than, than me, to be honest with you, especially because I think with the Web3, it's, I'd rather have someone with a specific Web3 agency that has um, a previous track record with Facebook. I just think it would be more fluid. If, and this is a true statement, if 
I don't like their performance. I will do it myself. You will see me be the marketer. I'm going to be completely transparent. If that is the case, I can do the job just so everyone feels comfortable and secure. Um, so that's the, the, that, that's kind of the transition we're going, uh, the new colorways, the new logos, uh, how we're going to find our specific niche, our specific target audience, and exactly the next roadmaps that you'll be seeing for probably the next month to possibly two months. Uh, and then once we find a very specific uh, target, we're going to create lookalike audiences, build that, build the revenue on the platform, and then we can have fun and start more Web3. Uh, I already have an influencer list. I have an influencer list from three different marketing agencies. Um, I will find out if they're very specific to BSC, what their costs are, see how well it is, and then we can start targeting that route as well. So we can have that Web 2.0 marketing and that Web 3 marketing kind of uh, running together. So we can take those sales and then recycle it right back into the business, just how any business truly should work, in my opinion. Uh, we're not here to just you know take profits. We're here to grow. That's really the priority. And that's why we've set that sales rep commission to that 100%. It's not because Zonimus wants your all sales. Uh, obviously, we do want profit, but the reality is we're trying to grow. We're still in the seedling stage of a business. Uh, we, we need to take that next step to where we're self-sufficient. And we will. It just takes time. This is not a business that you – it's a meme. It blows up. People wreck it. Um, it's, it's truly going to be an ongoing journey and an ongoing battle to be successful. Uh, but sooner or later, we're going to get there. I, I am very confident. Again, I don't promise riches, but I am confident that we'll hit the millions because I want that for my own self-gratification. Uh, obviously, my investors, uh, I would love for you all to make a nice check as well. But this is truly for my own self uh, and my own well-being. I, I believe Zonimus should be worth that much through a market capitalization. And uh, that's what I actually envision my business to be worth. We'll get there. It just takes time. Um, but that's kind of the roadmap that I've laid out fundamentally from the logo change to why we're doing it and the route that we're going to the Web 2.0. Uh, we can flirt with the Web 3 influencers. And if you all want a list of the Web 3 influencers, I can ask them. They should say it's OK. I can share that information. And maybe the community can tell me. Because, uh, again, Web 3 marketing is a little bit of not my strongest suit. So, you know, obviously... These Web3 marketing agencies are going to say, oh, this is the best person. But in hindsight, that might be the best person that gives them the best profit at the end of the day. Uh, so we can share some of the names. I'll ask them if I can. You all say, oh, I know that person. That person's amazing. I really like that person. Bam, use him, boss it. We can work like that as well. Again, this is somewhat of a community-ran project in the sense of, of, of opinions. Uh, I, I value my investors' opinions. Um, I value what you all believe, what you all like. If you all don't like something, I do try and shift to make sure everyone's happy and everyone feels secure. So there's my rant. <laughs> um, I hope everyone has a clear understanding of where we're headed. Uh, we're going to be heading there very soon. You all can see the shift change in the logos. You can see some of the social medias have changed. Um, even the banners are starting to change. Uh, we are making that slow transition over. Um, I can think about anything else to talk about, but that's really my priority is to get the revenue going. And then once the revenue is going and we're self-sufficient, then we can do a lot of other stuff. Because honestly, token taxes isn't really, it's not really profitable. It's not, um, it's not sustainable to, to depend on that volume for business operations. We have an actual service and we have a business. Let's utilize it. Uh, you all can hop off mic, uh, say anything. Uh, I'm done with my rant. Um, I'm going to crack open the, um, the energy drink. And you all can hop off mic again. Uh, free reign. You all can tell me your opinions. Leave it in the chat. It doesn't matter. Uh, again, we're very open. Uh, I'm somewhat finished. Billions. <laughs> yes, the new design is clean. Thank you so much, Richard. So <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, Buckeye. I don't really say the B word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really say billions and I'll, I'll tell you why I don't want people to feel let down if we don't go there uh, again I I try to be as realistic as possible do I envision one day um, if we're doing this project for 20 to 30 to 40 years if you think about it from a logical standpoint if the crypto market keeps growing and Zah keeps growing with it maybe that might be like I, again I, I don't even touch that word or that area because my priority is to get out of the hundreds of thousands into the millions. Uh, and then I will be somewhat um, satisfied with, with, with where we're heading because right now <clears throat> we're extremely undervalued. Uh, I feel like, again, 
I've had a couple businesses and this one's by far the hardest one I've done, <laughs> uh, but I definitely think it's going to be the most rewarding. And I do think that it should be worth millions like right now today. Uh, no problem though. Stuff happens again, just so people have a background. I mean, we launched during the worst time in crypto history. Um, I would even say as far as we might've launched worse than 2017 crypto winner. I mean, we launched a week to two weeks after FTX. If you looked at what the market sentiment was for Bitcoin or even the crypto industry, it was bad. Um, I'm, I even looked on Pink Sale and Gympad. We were one of the highest raises uh, in months on Gympad and even Pink Sale had a decline that week as well. So I don't feel too bad. I understand that that was the sentiment at the time. Um, and a lot of projects end up dying out when they can't grow. But guess what? We keep growing. Uh, we've already hit our bottom, in my honest opinion. Uh, stuff can happen in the marketplace. If BNB does take a hard dive, obviously that reflects price. But in terms of ZA standpoint right now, I don't see us going back to where I open up an internal AMA and there's three members, or sometimes it's just me and Mono talking. Um, I don't ever think we're going to go back there. Uh, it's all an uphill battle from here, and it's going to keep growing. Uh, but <clears throat> going back on the B word, the reason I don't use it I just want to get to the millions first, and then we can kind of make jokes about that. But logically, if I'm doing this for the next 10 years, 20 years, uh, and, the, and the market grows to where it needs to be, it's not out of the picture, uh, but I, I don't really discuss it or think about it. So please don't use the B word. <laughs> I just vision Austin Powers. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Richard, the new design is really clean. Um, again, everything is uh, truly done for the benefit of the project. It's not random. Uh, we, we try and make decisions here that actually make logical sense. And that's backed by some type of analytics, um, which again, every successful business should do that. And again, that's why I, I believe that, I'm not sure if anyone heard this, uh, but that's why I don't believe we're just like any other BSC project. Like we will be a top tier name in BSC. I mean, during the, uh, the crop AMA as well, they said it themselves. Everyone says it. We're not your typical BSC project uh, at all. We're not even just a typical utility project. We really do have something special here with a special team. And everything is aligned so professionally um, that all it takes is just a little bit more hard work and a little bit more time, and we'll get there. Uh, so that's done with my rant. Really, you all can hop off mic, um, say whatever you want. It was a quick AMA. It was really fun. This is one of the free balls. I do like doing it in a more presentation. I can do the professionalism where I break down, uh, you know, start to finish in a presentation. I can do those AMAs as well if you all require that. But before I say uh, something else, I was watching Elon Musk, very controversial figure for a lot of people, uh, but I somewhat admire him just because of like where he got uh, from PayPal to Tesla and all that, et cetera. Anyway, let's not care about his opinion. Something that he actually said during an interview, which uh, was really powerful. He said that I want a lot of CEOs to talk with their own mouths. And I was like, CEOs talk with their own mouths. Well, what does he mean by that? And he said, he goes, I've heard a lot of business reports. A lot of other businesses will release statements. They sound robotic. They sound planned. They sound like propaganda. Speak with your own mouth. Speak with your own thoughts. And honestly, when he said that, it, it reminded me of, of what we do here at Zonimus. We don't plan out just a script step by step. Uh, even the presentation I presented last time, it wasn't a step by step on how I care about sounding. I speak how I want to speak uh, because it, it's me as an individual. It shows authenticity of a company. And when he said that, it just you know gave that smile because he's right. A lot of businesses out there sound very robotic. They, they have a sense of professionalism that they try to state, but that's not them as an individual. Uh, it, it, they might be a professional individual, but what I'm trying to say is they try to make themselves sound what they think others should make them hear or what, what others would hear them at. Anyway, Elon Musk was talking about it. I can share the interview with you, uh, but it, it kind of describes what we do here at Zonimus. Very authentic and nothing planned. And we speak with our own words is what I was trying to say. Um, so again, guys, thank you so much. And the internal AMA, I, I just had to say that because it, it really made me happy about how we're an upcoming company. And it just kind of describes uh, the, the, the steps that we're taking and the sense of professionalism and where we're truly headed. Uh, it, the future is bright uh, here at Zonimus, from my personal opinion.
So again, um, I'm going to mute. You all can hop off mic. I'm going to give it a couple seconds. Uh, if you all don't say anything or you all don't leave any questions, you all can ask anything. Um, I will message my, uh, I'll message some of the marketing agencies and see if I can share some of the influencer list and I'll release it on an announcement. And you all can, you know, tell me if you've heard of any of these names. I, I won't release the prices uh, because I don't think I'm allowed to, but I'll release the names um, uh, with their permission. Hop off, Mike. Uh, tell me what you all think. Thank you, Bossit. <laughs> no, thank you, man. Thank you for coming to the internal AMA. Uh, I truly remember the days where I would have these and I would just be so upset and sad. I I'm going to be honest, man. Uh, it would just be me and Mono. That's it. I opened the chat now, 10 people, 14 people. The last one, 17 people. Um, it just, it shows something. It really does. Uh, it, it shows you all care and it, it, it it's very powerful, honestly. Uh, not only from the business standpoint, but it just gives me more power to just do better things with the project when more people are interacting, more people are showing up, more people care. Um, I, I love that. I, I, I can remember the days two weeks after launch where it was really rough. Maybe a week after launch, uh, I would open up an internal AMA. I was doing three um, three a week, by the way, just to show people that, hey, I'm here. I'm interactive. I'm not going to go anywhere. And it, sometimes it would just be me, me, Buckeye, Mono. That's it. Uh, sometimes SJ would be here and there. He'd show up. Uh, Seawolf would show up here and there. Um, but the reality is it, it was two people, three people. So one day I'm going to open up the VC. It's going to be 70 people. It's going to be 90 people, people that actually want to hear, that see the vision. They see the light. They see that Zonimus is going to go somewhere. Um, so just I love it. Again, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I'm done ranting. Um, you all make me so happy to, to be the, the leader of this business. And again, you all, I'm going to give it my absolute all to take Zonimus exactly where it needs to be a uh, day in and day out. I, I work like crazy for this project uh, because I love this project and I love the community as well. So again, I'm going to mute. You all can say anything. Uh, I see you all going in the chat. If not, I'm going to end the recording. Thank you so much. It's Wednesday, February 22nd, 135. Internal AMA was about 30 minutes. Thank you for your time. Okay. Um, thank you all so much. Stopping the recording right now.